mRNA vaccines have only been deployed in the context of viral diseases, namely COVID-19. However, researchers have found a way to use the technology to target bacterial pathogens, specifically developing an mRNA vaccine that is 100% effective at protecting mice from infection by the deadly bacterium that causes plague. Today, we will discuss these findings published in Science Advances and their broader health implications. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Madeline Barron, Science Communication Specialist at ASM. Now, to understand the study's findings and their significance, it's helpful to discuss how mRNA lipid nanoparticle, or mRNA LNP, vaccines work. We will use the vaccines against SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19, as an example. Essentially, an mRNA molecule encoding some component of the virus, in this case spike proteins on the virus surface, are encapsulated in a small sphere of lipids. Once inside the body, this lipid nanoparticle fuses with host cells and the mRNA is released. The cells then produce the protein encoded by the mRNA and release it. At this point, immune cells detect and mount a response, that is, produce antibodies, against this foreign protein. In the event of a real infection, those antibodies will be deployed to combat the virus. The COVID-19 pandemic has illustrated the potential of mRNA vaccine technology. mRNA vaccines are highly versatile, i.e. can be adapted to express different antigens, are rapidly manufacturable, induce a comprehensive immune response, and are self-adjuvating to promote robust and long-lasting immune protection. Given these characteristics, it would be great to be able to use mRNA vaccines against a wide range of pathogens, including bacteria. However, compared to viral pathogens, the antibacterial effects of mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccines are largely unexplored, in part because developing mRNA vaccines against bacterial pathogens can be challenging. One key reason is that viruses naturally used host cell machinery to make proteins. They are, as outlined by the researchers in the study, naturally adapted for expression in eukaryotic systems. Bacteria are different. They are their own replicative entities, and they don't rely on machinery in our cells to make proteins. As a result, it can be difficult to express bacterial mRNA in human cells in an immunologically meaningful way. Even if a bacterial protein is produced in a human cell, it might undergo post-translational modifications during production or secretion that make it look different to immune cells compared to the real deal and lead to a lack of a protective response. However, the recent study shows that it is entirely possible to develop potent mRNA vaccines for bacteria. The researchers focused on Yersinia pestis, the bacterium that causes plague. The scientists aim to design mRNA vaccines that target F1 polymers comprising a gel-like capsule on the bacterium's surface. Prior research has demonstrated that these F1 proteins are highly immunogenic and thus prime vaccine targets. The general structure of the mRNA nanoparticles consisted of an mRNA molecule encoding the gene for bacterial F1 polymers. This was attached to a sequence for a eukaryotic signaling molecule. The purpose of this molecule is to direct the F1 proteins through the mammalian cell's secretory pathway so they can be released and interact with immune cells. The researchers tested several iterations of the mRNA LNPs to boost vaccine stability and trigger robust immune response in mice. Ultimately, they landed on two versions of the mRNA lipid nanoparticles to test further, outlined here. The first included the addition of a sequence for a human protein called the FC protein. This protein is naturally part of antibodies and, when fused to other proteins, increases their stability, half-life, and immunogenicity. The second version of the nanoparticles lacked the mammalian signaling peptide included in the basic structure. Why did the scientists remove it? Well, they wanted to test the hypothesis that doing so would allow the bacterial proteins to bypass the normal secretory pathway in the mammalian cell and be secreted via alternative routes. They postulated that this may prevent the bacterial proteins from undergoing any post-translational modifications associated with the normal secretion pathway, which, as mentioned earlier, may hinder development of protective immunity. So how well did these mRNA lipid nanoparticles work? The researchers found that three doses of either version of the mRNA particles induced a robust cellular and humoral response in mice compared to the original particles, with the signal peptide devoid mRNA nanoparticles inducing a particularly robust humoral response. This is important because the humoral response, that is the production of antibodies, is key to combating extracellular pathogens like Y. pestis and many other bacteria. 
While cellular responses, mediated largely by T cells, are important for intracellular pathogens like viruses and certain bacteria. The ability to trigger both, therefore, is beneficial for the wider applicability of these mRNA vaccines. The researchers also showed that all animals in both vaccine groups were 100% protected from infection by Y. pestis. All animals in the negative control groups died within four to seven days post-infection. Moreover, animals receiving the nanoparticles conjugated to the human FC protein, which, as you'll recall, helps with stability, immunogenicity, and more, were 100% protected after a single dose, while those immunized with the signal peptide deficient variety were partially protected. Collectively, the results suggest that both versions of the nanoparticles are highly effective, though they differ slightly in the responses they trigger for reasons that are not entirely understood. The scientists suggest that the benefits offered by the human FC protein fusion may account for the efficacy of the conjugated mRNA nanoparticles even with a single dose and with potential post-translational modifications to the bacterial proteins once they've been secreted. On the other hand, the ability of the signal peptide deficient variety to avoid the normal eukaryotic secretory pathway may boost its ability to induce humoral immunity. More research is needed into these mechanisms and could be useful for vaccine optimization. In any case, the paramount finding here is that researchers developed an mRNA vaccine that was 100% effective against a highly lethal bacterial pathogen, providing a huge leap forward for the technology. Indeed, the study provides a foundation for the development of mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccines against a range of bacterial pathogens, including those that pose a broader, more immediate threat than Y. pestis, such as Staphylococcus aureus, for which, despite years of effort, there is still not an effective vaccine. The results may also be useful in the context of combating antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Already, there are studies underway investigating use of mRNA vaccines for other pathogens, including mycobacterium tuberculosis, the cause of tuberculosis. According to NPR, several vaccine developers are already working on prototype mRNA vaccines against tuberculosis, including Pfizer and a team in South Africa in partnership with the World Health Organization and others. Thus, progress is being made, and this study contributes to that progress. So what have we learned about mRNAs targeting bacteria? Well, mRNA vaccines have proven to be effective in the context of viral infection, though their uses against bacteria are limited for various reasons. However, researchers developed an mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccine that is 100% effective against Y. pestis in mice. The results paved the way for the development of mRNA vaccines targeting a diverse range of bacterial pathogens. And that's all for today. Remember to ring the bell to be notified whenever a new Microbial Minutes drops. I'm Madeline Barron, and I want to thank you for listening. Thank Ray Ortega for production, and I will talk to you soon.